a man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by John. The following is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Sports. The ACC race is tight as we head into the final month of games before the tournament. Georgia Tech got right back into the race with a win over number eight Maryland three days ago. But that was in the friendly confines of the Thriller Dome. Tonight, it's the Wolfpack Nation looking to squash the Yellow Jackets. NC State has lost just once at home this year. Julius Hodge and company know that this is a crucial game as both the Pack and the Jackets need a win to stay in the hunt for an ACC title. It's the Pack and Yellow Jackets coming up next. The Wolfpack has won the national championship. The Tar Heels are going to win the national championship. For the second year in a row, they wear the crown of the king. And the kids have done it. Maryland wins their first ever national championship. It's Wednesday Night Basketball in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Tonight, Tobacco Road stops at the RBC Center. For the 73rd time, it's the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech and the Wolfpack of NC State. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Mike Jemensky. Glad to have you along. Georgia Tech comes in with a lot of momentum, having beaten Maryland, and all of a sudden, they're getting some very effective guard play out of Jared Jack. Well, it should be a huge boost to their confidence, Tim, as they come up to Raleigh. And a big reason why they won that game, freshman point guard Jared Jack. You see the numbers there, 20 points, 6 of 9 from the field. He also had 8 assists in that game, finding his teammates, getting it done defensively with 3 steals, about the only black mark. The five turnovers because of his play last week, he was named ACC Rookie of the Week, averaging 17 and a half points. Tim, when he shoots well, they have a great chance to win. Now, NC State lost a game that they felt like they should have won against Virginia. Marcus Melvin really struggled the last two games, five of 21. He's got to come up big tonight. No, there's no question that they really rely on his offense. And uh, you see the numbers for the season there, not bad, just under 13 points. But he is an extremely versatile big man. He can put the ball on the floor, he can get out in the break. Pretty good post moves inside, but really his calling card is being able to shoot it from outside. He can consistently knock down the three-pointer. They need him to get back on track here, Tim. Since Herb Sendek has taken over here at NC State, the games between these two clubs have really been close. Four of the last seven decided by three points or less. Starting lineups coming up next. Basketball before we get to the opening tip, take a look at the food line starting lineups. First for the Jackets. We look at their starting lineup, it doesn't change very much. And as you look at Chris Bosch, he leads the ACC in field goal percentage, second in rebound percentage, and had a double double against Maryland. For NC State, everybody talks about Julius Hodge. He is the team's leading scorer, second in the ACC in scoring, and uh, four double doubles this year, one triple double. Cheryl Crawford Powell and Marcus Melvin are the rest of the starters. There's a look at 39-year-old Herb Sendek. This is the seventh season in Raleigh. 121 wins at State. And for Georgia Tech, it's Paul Hewitt. Under Hewitt, Tech has won 12 of its last 18 conference games and are above 500 after the halfway point of the AC season, ACC season for the first time since 96. Tech has it first. NC State with a record of 12 and 7. Georgia Tech 12 and 8. We told you these games normally close between these two. Inside they go to Bosch and Bosch can't get it to go down. And Tim, you know, it's, it, it gets a little redundant to say these games are critical, but for each of these teams, NC State trying, trying to break a two-game losing streak to get right back at home, and uh, Georgia Tech is looking to break through on the road for the first time this year, 0-7 away from the Thriller Dome. Both teams 5-4 and four in the conference. They go to their perimeter offense, and now Powell will penetrate. A little fall away jumper, banks it in, and State's on the board. He's going to be a big key for this ball club. He's got a little bit of a size advantage over Ed Nelson. Did a nice job of putting the ball on the floor. A skill he really didn't have last year. This is Jack. He will get him in their offense. Guarded by Crawford, man to man. Lewis, perhaps the most consistent player. Nelson, last year's rookie of the year. A talented young team, Georgia Tech. Bosch's second shot. And he banks it in. 
That was a tough shot. Yeah, and Georgia Tech clearly trying to establish something inside first. Chris Bosch gets the first two touches of the game. Fifteen thousand here at the RBC Center tonight. Shot clock down to fifteen. Melvin in the paint, kicks it out. This is Crawford for three. Too strong. And the first whistle of the game. They call that on Jack. We'll take a look here at uh, the versatility of Chris Bosch. Really very good at putting the ball on the floor. Either way, he's a left-hander, but he can go left or right. A nice little spin move, and uh, he's going to be a great, great player in this league, we hope, for a long time. Mike, the foul was on Powell. That's his first. Jack scores at the other end, so it's 4-2 Georgia Tech. We talked to Paul Hewitt. You know, Jared Jack this whole year has really been looking to set his teammates up. He only has one more assist than uh, field goals, uh, but he's, they want him to be a little bit more aggressive, and he certainly was against Maryland with that 20-point effort. Get the scouting report on Jack, and everybody says he's got to improve his shot a little bit. He's been a little bit inconsistent with that. Although he played really well against Maryland. Look at that key three Here's Powell with the turnaround, and he backs it in. That's why, that's why I say to him, when, when Jack is shooting a high percentage, they're tough to beat because you have to honor him on the perimeter, and it stretches the defense a little bit. Interesting matchup there with Julius Hodge. They want to get some length on Jack. Elder shot is strong. Iron's not kind, and Powell loses it out of bounds. Just up the road tonight, North Carolina gets a home win, so that stretch continues over Virginia. 47-42, Carolina. Two freshmen getting it done. Felton the chance with 21 apiece. And Nelson with a tough shot, hesitated. And threw in the running one-hander to go up by two. Well, you touched on it last year's rookie of the year and the foul on that play on Marvin Lewis. But they really needed to get uh, Ed Nelson moving. You know, he was he was an over 50% field goal shooter last year in the high 30s right now, taking the same number of shots. So if they can get that type of productivity out of him in the middle, it'll be a huge plus. Foul was called on Marvin Lewis. That's his first. They see five NC State players above the free above the free throw line. This is where they run their offense. They love to spread you out and get backdoor cuts. Like the old Princeton attack. Here's Melvin shot off the iron. Lewis with the rebound and they'll push it just a little bit. Box left alone. Lewis loses it. Crawford will take it the distance and score. Crawford second in the league and steals at 2.4. A marvelous defensive play. Elder is fouled at the other end by Josh Powell, his second. Here's Crawford coming at you. There's really no way Nelson could do anything about that. He was in full retreat. A good job of crossing over and getting him back on his heels. But this is the thing that you have to guard against with Georgia Tech. They get from defense to offense maybe better than any team in the league. And even after a made field goal, they came back down the other end and they get free throws as a result. See the numbers for B.J. Elder. As he wins out the first one. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Levi Watkins makes his first appearance as Powell goes out with two personals. So NC State getting smaller. Levi Watkins, uh, arguably their best and maybe only player off the bench. NC State has had trouble developing that bench. Well, he misses them both. And we're still tied at six. Here's your backboard cut. Great pass. Sherrill's fouled. And this will be on Lewis. If it is, it's his second. And it is. Well, see, and this is where when you get um, Levi Watkins coming into the ball game, it doesn't hurt you offensively for State. It's the other end that it, that's an issue. If they can overcome uh, the, the inside strength of, of Georgia Tech and see if it works there. But offensively, they really shouldn't miss a beat. Take that back. The foul was not on Lewis. It was on Ed Nelson. Cheryl makes the first. 
Scooter Sherrill's an 84% free throw shooter. You know, he hit those 35 straight, then missed, but now he's 22 of 20 of his, his last 26. Terrific at the line. He's been really spotty over his last six games. Every other game, he's played very, very well in double figures, and then he's had games of eight, eight, and no points. So they need him uh, in a team that has trouble scoring. They need more consistency out of Cheryl, especially from the perimeter. This is Elder. Bosch with a penetration, the left hand. And Nelson is fouled. And so Clifford Crawford picks up the personal. And that's all caused by the pen penetration by Chris Bosch at 6'10. The ability to put the ball on the floor. Give Nelson two free throws on that. Three misses in a row at the line for Georgia Tech. This is something that Ed Nelson has struggled with. He's a 64% free throw shooter. And you know, when, when you're on the road, free throw shooting and turnovers are two key areas. And if you get to the line, you must take advantage of it, and you've got to take care of the basketball. He makes the second one, so with 15.47 to play in the first half, it's a one-point game. NC State leads Georgia Tech by one, 15-47 to play in the first. This is a critical game as we head through February. Here's a look, Mike, at the conference standings presented by Toyota. All of a sudden, some uh, footsteps being heard over at Chapel Hill. Two straight conference wins for them. Uh, they've got a critical game coming up this weekend at Clemson. Virginia dropping out of that mix in third place. And there you see these two teams at five and four. Maryland leads Florida State early in that game, 14-7. And there's Wake Forest sitting atop the ACC. But a big game tomorrow night over in Winston-Salem where the Blue Devils go to face the Demon Deacons Absolutely. for first place. And then to Maryland they go Sunday night. Yeah, wake up to Maryland. So <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> no time to savor any victories this year. No, but as a fan, what a great time of the year this is. Here's the steal. And Bosch misses it close. Now he goes up, banks it in, and all of a sudden, Georgia Tech takes the lead. Yeah, and I, again, I talked about the size of NC State, ninth in the league in rebounding, and they got smaller with Powell going out of the game. An offensive rebound hurts them on the turnover. A couple of ties, a couple of lead changes in this one. This is we expected it. Bosch now with four points. For three. Well, and Scooter Sherrill starts looking light up. Now, we've said, you know, Julius Hodge has really takes a long time to work himself in the games offensively on the scoring side, but the drive and the penetration set up Sherrill on that play. Sherrill has an interesting three-pointer. That was from way outside. Elder with the penetration, the running one-hander. There you see uh, going against Jared Jack. Nice job cutting him off, but uh, the good vision by Hodge, and that's just having a sense of where your teammates are on the floor. Julius Hodge very quiet early as he's apt to be. Really becoming a second half threat. Quality player. Look for teams, as they did on that time, look for teams to be physical with Julius Hodge, both Elder and Mohammed, very wide bodies. Fans wanted the foul, didn't get one, and finally Schencher fouls Watkins. Here's what we were talking about with Maryland, now 17 to 10, early in that one. Terrapins having lost two in a row. South Carolina pulling away from Clemson. Clemson gave the Dukies a pretty good game. There is a very good game for about a half for 30 minutes, and then Duke's defensive pressure wore them down. Here's what you're talking about with Levi Watkins. He's been shooting it much better as of late. 57% over his last two. He also came off the bench in the first game against Georgia Tech and had 15 points. Elder with the offensive. Use that left arm to gain an advantage. Uh, B.J. Elder in this first 
six minutes of the ball game, and he'll be coming out. He's been very aggressive off of the dribble and really does not have much to show for it. That time getting the push, 0 of 2 from the field, 0 of 2 from the line. Bosch, Lewis, Muhammad, Jack, and Schencher on the floor now for Georgia Tech. Being said, Elder has had a marvelous season for Paul Hewitt. He calls him the, one of the best kept secret weapon. He's one of the best players nobody knows about. He has been solid for Georgia Tech this year. Here's Melvin for three. That's why I think he's got the advantage. If he can take Schencher outside, Fincher does not want to leave the paint area and go out and challenge that three, but Melvin has to connect, make him pay. NC State now two for four beyond the arc. Muhammad protects the ball and scores with a nice drive through the paint. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's no real shot blocker in there for North Carolina State right now, so if you get a little advantage and get an edge and find a seam, you can get to the front of the rim. Muhammad came in and ignited Georgia Tech against Maryland, had an unexpected eight points. A couple of spectacular dunks. And, and not the, certainly not the perimeter threat that B.J. Elder is, but similar. He's very physical and an excellent defensive player. Fletcher gets a block. Got to dribble the ball out of bounds that time. Well, I tell you what, Luke Schencher, when we talked about Melvin having the advantage outside, Schencher has the advantage here. He really cut off the lane that time. There was no place to go for Marcus Melvin. Nice defensive work by the big fella. So NC State by three. These teams are about as even as you can get. See those numbers and you look at their records. This is Lewis beyond the arc. His shot is short. Crawford with a nice pass to Hodge. Can't finish. Jack dribbles into trouble now beyond the arc. A little bit out of control in that possession. Both teams, Garrett Jack uh, going one on five. Crawford scores. State starting to pull away. Paul Hewitt says, hold on. We've got to talk. And, and Paul Hewitt specifically talking to Jarrett Jack on that last play and uh, asking him, you know, what, what were you thinking in that situation? Hey, ACC basketball continues this Saturday, 1 o'clock. The Tar Heels and the Tigers. Boy, Jawad Williams, he's averaging 21 points a game in the last four games. Clemson's Ed Scott, one of the ACC's leading scorers. Great ACC basketball here on your Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Station all season long as we head to the tournament. Mike, what about these guys? Well, I think David Noel may be the best walk-on in the country. He has played particularly well late uh, coming in, starting for Rashad McCants. And Shea Christie has been much more aggressive offensively over the last three or four games. You see he's scoring 17 points per, shooting it very well from behind the arc. Most of Clemson's offense is going to come from their backcourt, Shea Christie, Ed Scott. Shea Christie had a strong game against Maryland in one of the sloppiest games I've seen down at Little John, but Clemson almost pulled that one out. This is Nelson. Big rebound by Levi Watkins. Tempo of the game has picked up a little bit. Nice defensive intensity here for NC State. Georgia Tech at 5 of 13 from the field. Back to Levi Watkins. This is for three. Tech comes up with it. A couple of careless possessions by Georgia Tech. Ah, Joe for two. See if they get him involved. Shot clock at 10. Shot clock at three. Powell from way beyond the arc. Not a good shot. Really, NC State uh, didn't really have a purpose on that possession. Never really got into anything. And then you have the quick shot down the other end by Georgia Tech really bailing him out. Lewis got in close, couldn't finish. Here's Betterman. And Betterman is fouled by Jared Jack. 
You've got to be patient on the road, Tim, especially when things aren't going well. And, you know, just Georgia Tech in a hurry to score right now. 10.43 to play. 16 to 11, the Wolfpack. NC State by five here early in the first half. Chris Bosch has been a factor inside. Two of five from the field. Four points for him. Also defensively, how about that? You don't see a power forward pick the pocket of a guard too often, but he did it at the front of the press and was able to finish on the offensive rebound. There you see the uh, rookies of the year. Georgia Tech has owned this category since 1976 when it was uh, started nine times. Looks like they're on a uh, course for number 10 with Mr. Bosch. Uh, you know, I, I think he's been Rookie of the Week four times. Last year, Ed Nelson won the award, as we talked about. I know you were one of the uh, Rookies of the Week when you were at Duke. Who won the Rookie of the Year that year? Uh, <laughs> Hawkeye Whitney was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the other, of course, Mike Jemitz. Some, some Polish kid from Duke. <laughs> well, was, way to go, Mike. I was Polish before it was cool to be Polish at Duke. I want to know that <laughs> the G-Man could play, no question about it. Stayed on an 8-2 run. That's why they have the 16-11 lead that Mike was talking about. It was fun watching you play, partner. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was more fun playing. I mean, it, was a, it was a great honor to be a part of this conference in its history. Nelson with a little jump hook, too strong. Second, the second most fun I've had is sitting over here talking about it. <laughs> I'll tell you this, you never lose over here. You still get paid for this, too? That's not a, yeah, that's not a bad gig. I'll tell you what, we were both privileged to play in the ACC, different sports, but a great conference. You gotta wear pads, though. <laughs> Yeah, you trust trust me, I never hit anybody. Yeah, see those guys out there? Nobody wearing pads out there. <laughs> Benerman comes in and gives him some quality minutes here. That's a sweet reverse by Benerman. We talked about trying to find some depth on the bench, and Cam Benerman has been playing better recently. He scored in the last four games that he's played. Lewis had a look. Crawford jumping quickly. Inside to Nelson. They bang it inside again, and he's... Partially blocked, no foul. Crawford is fouled at the other end by Elder. Let's take a look at uh, Cam Bennerman. Nice move, right-handed player, able to finish going left underneath the basket. Pretty ac acrobatic move with the league's number one shot blocker staring in the face as well. It's a pretty sweet move with the jump stop through the double team and then the reverse layup, and it's a 10-2 run in the last 5:01. So Elder picks up his second personal. Scooter Cheryl comes back into the ball game, and Betterman goes out. Seven point lead, under nine minutes to play first half. Tim Grant, Mike Kaminsky with you at the RBC Center. More than 15,000 here tonight. Crawford loses it in the paint. Georgia Tech going into the zone, trying to disrupt NC State's offense a little bit. Successful getting the turnover. Turnover number four, the Yellow Jackets need to score badly. Been awfully quiet. They go inside with Bosch, and Bosch can't get it to go down. Had a tough time in close, unable to finish, but he'll go to the line. The ACC.com, your first stop for ACC information, including live stat updates from all conference games and links to all nine schools. The ACC.com, your front row seat for ACC sports on the web. Marcus Melvin picks up his first, and Bosch, a 73% free throw shooter, goes to the line. As you look at his number for the season. Also the number one rebounding freshman in the NCAA, so uh, making his impact nationally as well. well. When you talk about a guy who's 6'10", 210, a freshman, leads the ACC in field goal percentage, second in rebounding average, as you say, having an impact nationally. See a kid that stays here, how long does he stay? You have to start wondering about that Come these days. On. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you, you hate to even talk about it. It's a fact of life, though. And, uh, you, you know, I, I think one of the reasons he's talked about coming to Georgia Tech is because Paul Hewitt preached about the education that he'd get. And uh, he said he was one of the few coaches that actually did that 
So, I, you know, there's no doubt that he's serious about the academic side of school, and you, you hope that uh, he stays around. I think physically a little immature right now. He can certainly stand to grow a little bit more, especially he's going to be playing inside up in the league, and he's going to be banging against some big bodies. Shot clock down to six again for State. Crawford a little spin move, has it blocked. Shot clock at two, they got to get it off. Golden. And Bosch with a rebound. NC State just can't generate their offense, and at the line, they're only one for five. Or Georgia Tech, rather. And it, and it continues, and it, it continues with, you know, they get a great defensive stop down one end. They make NC State use 35 seconds, and then they go down and get a quick shot. Oh, nice pass to Hodge. You can't do anything with it. Has it knocked away. State gets it right back. And Bosch knocks it out of bounds. Well, how about this? A little bit sloppy, 7.20 to play first half. Seven twenty to play in the first half, and it's a six-point NC State lead. Georgia Tech really having a tough time scoring. What is it, Mike, this year about uh, the teams playing at home? I just think it's the youth throughout the league, Tim, that uh, you know, one of the last things you learn is the mental toughness of taking your game out on the road and playing well. And then teams are so young, and they've, they've lost a lot of upperclassmen, a lot of talent, like the whole league did last year. I really think that it's made, you know, the first thing you do is you become comfortable at home. Then you learn to go out on the road. And I just don't think that, that that's happened yet. Top six teams in the conference, 26 and 1. And, I, and oddly enough, it's Maryland is the one team that has the loss at home, the senior most team in the league. Right. And, and defending national champions. Well, you look at this, they're not scoring very well. Either team, really. Here's Lewis. It's a little running jump shot. That'll help. That's his first bucket. Right, and that's a nice job working through the offense. And McHenry hitting the lane, penetration, making something happen. And I tell you, if Lewis gets looks like that, he's going to knock those down more than not. NC State has missed its last five three-pointers, and it's a team that lives beyond the arc. 33% of their offense comes from there, and uh, you, you can do the math. If you're not shooting it well, it puts a lot of pressure on you. Benjamin tried to dunk it. Got short changed. Here's the pass to Lewis. The rim moved up to about 10-6 that time, I think. <laughs> Jack in the paint. Good, strong move. And I'll put emphasis on strong. I mean, he is a tough, strong kid, and when he gets into the paint, he can physically beat you up. He has four points, and it's a two-point game. He'll go to the line. The bucket counts. <laughs> Foul on Jared Jack, and uh, good look by Betterman. That's a nice seal inside by Levi Watkins. Then finishing on the other end. He's just a little bit stronger than Brooks, able to get him on his back and hold his position. You know, he was a starter earlier in the year, Mike, but he looks better coming off the bench. He looks more comfortable. He's averaging 23 minutes a game. Well, you know, the, the thing with Watkins is that you could almost make the argument, Tim, that this is his freshman year. You know, he only played 13 exactly. games last year and then tore his ACL up in Maryland. And it really takes about a year, I think, to get over the mental hurdle of that injury. And I think that's about where he is right now. And his production has been very good. This is a club, NC State, that took a hit early by losing uh, Billy and Eftemal injured his knee towards ACL. He knows when he's on the camera. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. I, you know what? I'm actually, I'm impressed that NC State is, is where they are right now without Eftemoff because he is such a big key to their team last year. I thought they were at his, at their best when he was out on the floor. State's got numbers. Throws it away. The ball was kicked, though, by Lewis. And so they'll reset the shot clock and give the ball to NC State. You know, it's ironic we're talking about Eftemoff. He came into his own last year when Watkins had the knee injury. Then Eftemoff hurts his knee, and Watkins is coming on strong now. Maryland up only by four now. Clemson goes down in defeat. So there's the bucket by Powell, and it's 23-16. Lewis tries to answer with a three, and he drills it. 
They'll stu still shooting quickly, and as we talked about, even after a made basket, that's the second time that Georgia Tech has gotten the ball up the floor quickly for a score. You know, you can't you can't spend any time going into a home run trot after you score when you're playing Georgia Tech. Melvin banks it in. A couple of lefties going at it out there from down the perimeter. Marcus Melvin, Chris Bosch, his first bucket, six point game. If you make Bosch defend on the perimeter, you take that shot blocker out of the paint, opens things up a little bit. This foul will be called on Scooter Sherrill. Closed captioning for ACC basketball is provided by RBC Centura. Building a better bank, one customer at a time. Nelson and Muhammad get a break. Paul Hewitt continues to move his bench in and out of the ball game. What do you see, Mike? Well, I think the Tech has gotten back into this game by being more aggressive. You know, that last quick three notwithstanding, they've done a better job of trying to get to the rim, break NC State down off the dribble, and get into the paint. This is Lewis. He's had the hot hand. It's a box for the turnaround, and again, he's short, but he's fouled. And that's something you can ill afford to do. You know, if you're Marcus Melvin and you get Chris Bosch to settle for a fall away jump shot like that, you've done your job. And if he makes it, you shake his hand and go down the other end of the floor. But don't bail him out on a foul. That's two, though, on Marcus Melvin. Georgia Tech just two of six at the line. Looks good on that one. It looks like he was pinching his shot early, coming up short, hitting the front of the rim, but he's got six points. Marvin Lewis now gets a little bit of a breather. Not bad on the year, a 73% shooter, very good for a big guy. And you know that uh, you know, if he can get that number up a little bit, it's going to help him because he is going to be in situations where he's going to get banged and fouled a lot inside. Makes the second one. Georgia Tech now with Muhammad, Brooks, and McHenry off the bench and in the game along with Bosch and Elder. He's already, you know, I talked about inside. He is second in the ACC in free throw attempts at now at just under 120. Elder has yet to score. Another turnover. Elder pushes it up quickly. Muhammad looks inside, nothing there. Go over to Brooks, swing it around. Go the other way. Offensive foul. Foul is on Bosch. That's his first. 3.48 to play in the first half. It's NC State 25, Georgia Tech 21. NC State with a four-point lead. That, despite the fact that their leading scorer, Julius Hodge, has not scratched in this game. 0 of 2 from the field. Couldn't get that layup. A little frustrated at being out of the offense and then felt like he didn't get a call on that play. You can see the exasperation on his face. But, Tim, you look at it. Against ACC competition, he scores 60% of his points in the second half. So maybe not a complete surprise that he's slow to get going here. Well, he has yet to score. Watkins has six. Powell has six. Here's Powell with another one. That was a sweet move. Yeah, he has got some solid inside moves. Eight points now, four of five from the field. At Georgia Tech, at their end of the ball, Bosch has seven. He's their leading scorer. Here he is with a turnaround in the paint, kicks it back outside to McHenry, who's not even close. Now really, the guys on the floor, Elder and Bosch, are your best three point shooters. Everybody else suspect from behind the arc. Follow Muhammad, that'll be his first. In this game, a lot of a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, some missed baskets, which uh, leads you to this statistic, but only one assist in the game for Georgia Tech. Low-scoring first half. Georgia Tech with six turnovers, NC State with six turnovers, and Hodge at the line. Julius Hodge, a 6'6", 184-pound sophomore. 
scores and rebounds and handles. He makes a short free throw. 80% free throw shooter. He's the most fouled guy in the Atlanta Coast Conference. Yeah, he's, I mean, right from the start this year, he's really taken the game to a new level, and he's been very aggressive in attacking the rim. And I think if you set that precedent and you get it in the referees' minds, if you do that, uh, you get some calls and you put yourself on the line. And that's a, that could be a big boost to your scoring average when you're taking uh, six, seven, eight free throws a game. No question about it. Though. He's shot 145 free throws now for the season. 28-21, NC State. Bosch is fouled. Crowell wanted a walk. And Bosch comes up limping. There's nothing like college basketball, folks. And if you're celebrating the win, do it right. The way you celebrate says a lot about you, and it reflects on your school. So, hey, guys, be responsible. Take care of yourself and your friends. And that's a fine message from Anheuser-Busch. Foul was on Levi Watkins. And Chris Bosch makes his first. Scooter Sherrill comes back into the game, and Benerman goes out. Benerman's given him some quality minutes here in the first half. Okay, man, it was a spark uh, offensively. Some nice job on the uh, nice work on the defensive end of the floor as well. Bosch making a, his living at the free throw line in this first half. That's now five of six. Makes it a five point game. And immediate foul. So McHenry picks up a personal. That's his first. With 2.39 to play in the first half. Have the feeling that the game just hasn't caught its rhythm yet. So we talked about Hodge going to the line, and he ends up right back on the line. Four double doubles this year, and of course, the triple double early. And he's a guy who we, we, we showed Eftimoff early and uh, take a look at this game coming up this weekend. Saturday, 1 o'clock, North Carolina and Clemson. And you don't want to miss that one right here. Ray Common, Jefferson Pilots, Old Station. Hodge makes the second. Once again, a critical game to North Carolina in the stretch right now where they feel like they've maybe regained a little bit of the momentum after a uh, five or six game losing streak. See if NC State can get something going defensively here. They've done a nice job on Georgia Tech thus far. Elder no points. Oh, come on. Here's Crawford with the rebound and here comes State. Yeah, they're starting to make some stops now and pull away a little bit. Yeah, and those are the those are the types of shots that you need to convert, especially on the road. Shents are getting the point blank range. Kick it out to Collins. This is beyond the arc. Not sure he's the guy you want shooting with three pointers. You know, not, not nearly the perimeter shooter as, uh, as Marcus Melvin, certainly, and not Powell either. I have a feeling here that Georgia Tech needs a basket so badly. Only one of four beyond the, the arc, and here's Jack with a spin move. Almost throws it away at Schencher. Schencher walks. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation and the use of it without the express permission of Raycom Jefferson Pilot Sports. And the ACC is prohibited. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is part of the learning curve that you have to go through with a freshman point guard, especially on the road. Your offense is, is bogging down, and, uh, you know, Jared Jack has been halfway through an ACC season, but there's still some, some learning to be done. What you have to do is you know, get your team under control, make sure that they get a good shot and a good possession. 23 to play in the first half. Levi Watkins for three. He has nine points. And Watkins not only offensively, but doing a pretty nice job on Bosch, too, on the defensive end. Now it's the Yellow Jackets down by 10 and need a basket really badly. Bosch beyond the arc. And the foul will be on Marvin Lewis. That's three on Lewis. Defensive intensity picking up for North Carolina State. Georgia Tech 35% from the field in this game. This is a team 
Tim, they, they scored 90 points against Maryland on Sunday, the first team this year to do that. And here they're struggling. They're not going to get to 30 at the half. No, but it is a streaky team. It's a team of runs in their first game January 11th between these two. Georgia Tech used a 22 to 4 run to beat State. How about this? Off the bench tonight, NC State with 11 points from their bench. And that's what they average normally. Yeah, and that's, uh, it's, it's, and maybe that's starting to, to come around. Again, we talked about Levi Watkins. He was shouldering most of that load. He's got nine of the 11. He's been terrific tonight. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech only has two bench points, and that's really hurt them. Fifty nine seconds to play in the half. But Carl Hass is at the scorers table. Try to find out what this is all about. I think they're trying to clear up who that foul was on. This may be a question by Paul Hewitt because Marvin Lewis has three. He wants to question it. Well, and the thing, you know, we talk about finishing halves and finishing games. And right now, if you're North Carolina State, you really want to make sure you take care of business in this last minute. You've built up a nice lead. And uh, one of the things that, that Georgia Tech was talking about coming into this ball game, Tim, was the fact that they were a little shaky in their confidence on the road. If you let them creep back in here, maybe they get a little bit of momentum. There's the, the jump shot. Well, if they're asking who the foul is, there it is, Lewis. And that'll be his third. So the discussion continues. Oh, and that's a, that was a, a nice replay there. Good block out by Julius Hodge. And in a game where we thought that Georgia Tech might have an advantage on the rim, especially on the offensive side, NC State more than holding their own on the glass with a 16-14 advantage. I think they were asking about the foul prior to that one, which may have been on Anthony McHenry. I just looked over and read the lips of Edward Corbett, one of the officials, and he said 55, and that would be Corbett, or McHenry, rather. I think they need some sort of time limit like the NFL. Put the two-minute clock on them. <laughs> <laughs> the officials tonight, Carl Hess, Ed Corbett, and Alan Spinauer. Now the players come back out on the court with 59 seconds left and will conclude this first half of play. We hope. A couple more minutes, we're going to need a layup lines. <laughs> You're on a roll tonight, partner. I love this. <laughs> well, the confusion was, we're told, was the foul on 55 or 24. Well, I think uh, our replay showed Marvin Lewis. Uh, so all over. But they're still talking about McHenry. Here's the replay again. You tell me. Here's the rebound. There's Lewis. If in fact, and then the whistle. Yeah, if in fact that's the play they were looking at. Exactly. But it looks like it the way Hodge reacted and the way Lewis reacted. Are we sure? Is, is Carl Hess, is he watching a little bit of the Maryland Florida State game over there or is he checking the replay? <laughs> It's a 10 point game and Carl Hess still over there by the monitor. Or it could be the end of West Wing. Now they're looking at a couple plays before the one we're showing you to the previous foul. I think Paul Hewitt was asking because he's concerned with Lewis with three personals. Mm -hmm. So now he's asking them to go back and find out who the foul was on the play before that, the foul before the Lewis foul we showed you. So we'll roll our tape back. That was a travel. Meanwhile, while the delay goes on, Paul Hewitt continues to teach and coach. 
Herb Sendek says, what the heck's going on here, guys? Now come on over. All right, here we go. Georgia Tech shooting 35%, just 8 for 23, and it's costing them. NC State 12 for 25, 48%. Normally when NC State shoots better than 40%, they normally win. And, you know, you talk to you talk to Paul Hewitt and, uh, and their coaching staff, and when they go on the road, they're very happy with the looks that they get. You know, it's kind of the same. They just don't knock down shots when they're away from home. And I think you have to give a little bit of a credit, maybe a lot of credit, to the uh, defensive intensity of NC State. So Lewis does go out of the game now with three personals. He gets a seat next to the coaches. And Hodge has another free throw coming. Boy, he's a good player. Just a really good player. Now with five points. All right, I was, I was before that that uh, before that little layoff talking about Eftimov and being out of the floor. And Hodge was the one who really had a shoulder a lot of the responsibility. Muhammad with the putback off Elder's shot. 40 seconds to play. Muhammad had a couple of big dunks at the end of the first half against Maryland, which uh, kind of lit their fire a little bit. Ten-point game. <laughs> it's got some ups. It came down that baseline and exploded. Shot clock now down to 10. Game clock at 12. Two-second differential. Crawford shot. Hard. There's Muhammad again. That is no good. So that's the end of the first half. Sloppy at times, exciting at times, and it's a 10-point game. NC State 35, Georgia Tech 25. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after this. A gorgeous night in the Triangle. NC State leading Georgia Tech by 10 as we we're prepared to start the second half. Big game in the ACC. Georgia Tech 5 and 4 in the conference. NC State 5 and 4 in the conference as well. There you see and, uh, where NC State has stood in their losses, certainly in the game at halftime, but really losing a lot of steam in the second half. But you will note all of those games on the road. Uh, certainly they should be able to get energy from this crowd here this evening if they play with the same defensive intensity uh, they can finish this ball game just had a funny rhythm to the game there in the first half we'll see what happens here in the second half game had some stops and goes it's a 10 point game let's see if uh, if you're Georgia Tech if you can find some continuity in your offense they're second in the ACC in assists and 17 per game they had one assist in that first half then as you look at this, Marcus Melvin not on the charts. Six for 27 the last two and a half games, shooting 22%. So his slump continues as Hodge has it blocked away by Bach. Over and back, there's the turnover. Georgia Tech ball, and Herb Sendak doesn't like it. Chris Bosch with his third block of the game. Look at it. B.J. Elder just getting up underneath Hodge so he can't elevate. And Bosch coming in. It's nice to have a big fellow like that to clean up mistakes. Bosch, 6'10, 210 pounds. Here's Nelson, faces up the basket. Lewis left alone beyond the arc. Splash! Scooter Sherrill got hung up in the garbage in the lane, fell down on the floor, and uh, Lewis had all day to look at that shot. Tech comes out with some pressure now. Getting across the timeline, Melvin brings it back out. Want to revisit the game down in Georgia Tech. It was a 53 to 30 second half that propelled Tech to that win. Cheryl for three. Big rebound by Powell, and he lost it out of bounds. Good body control. <laughs> tried to, the big fellow tried to stay in, just couldn't get it. Now it's uh, NC State a little rushed in their offense with the long early three. Well, in that game you're talking about, that was that 22 to 4 run by Georgia Tech. And that has been something of an, an issue for NC State this year. They have had games where they've done long droughts without scoring. Lewis again, this time comes up short. And 
Cheryl with an offensive foul. That's two on Cheryl. Let's take a look on this play. And I, you know, they called him for putting his left arm out. It looked like he kept it pretty close to his body. If anything, I thought the defense was moving on that play. So Cheryl goes out of the ball game, and Betterman comes back in. Betterman getting a lot of playing time tonight. Betterman really the only Wolfpack rookie to see any extended playing time. Two of them have redshirted, and uh, Mejia, Don Mejia, really hasn't had played much since the beginning of the year. Good look inside the elder who converted. That's his first bucket, and it's a five-point game, so Tech has cut the lead from 10 to 5. And here's Nelson. Lewis with the putback. NC State not handling the pressure well. On the three. And Herb Sendek takes a timeout. 18.03 to play. Georgia Tech with a run. Thirty-two. Georgia Tech on a seven-nothing run, and Marvin Lewis five points here to start the second half. Right, and you look at Georgia Tech; they like to go with full court pressure, but they didn't shoot well enough in that first half. They couldn't get to it. Now they've been much more efficient in their offense in the second half. Three of five shooting, and it's allowed them to set up in this defense. North Carolina State has to be a little more poised against the pressure. Tech comes right back with the pressure, and they give it to Hodge. Hodge can handle it, tells everybody to go on up. First time that State's had a chance to get into its offense this half. Hodge on the baseline. Melvin's slump continues. He just looks frustrated. I just sometimes, you know, you, you get into that funk and it's it's tough to break out of. You're searching for that one shot that will get you back into rhythm. Shot clock down to 11. Shot clock at five. Crawford, Hodge. Didn't get the shot they want, but there's Powell. Powell with a putback again and blocked by Nelson. Thanks for Georgia Tech doing a nice job inside. This foul will be called on Marcus Melvin. Wow, has the momentum changed in this game? Uh, I've gotten their scorers going in this second half. Marvin Lewis knocking down the three. B.J. Elder, those were his first two points. And Lewis again on that offensive rebound, but that play off scored off the defense. Lewis shot off the iron. Ball still loose, and Hodge comes down with it. When Nelson thought he had a steal. See the three-point situation, first and second half. Crawford looks, doesn't have the shot, gets it over to Hodge. Powell got caught in the air. And Betterman loses it out of bounds. Well, and defense, Not a good pass by Hodge. And how about the matchup with Georgia Tech? They've got Chris Bosch on Betterman. And Bosch is really just kind of playing free safety in the back of that defense, really not honoring Betterman to score at all. And it's allowing him to wreak some havoc inside. One point game. Coming into this game, Georgia Tech felt like they could get B.J. Elder and Ismail Muhammad down on the low block against North Carolina State's guards. NC State looks a little bit shaky. Nine unanswered points for Georgia Tech. Shot clock at 11. Melvin takes it inside. 
and finally banks it in with a putback, his own rebound. And then knocking the ball smartly out of bounds so Georgia Tech couldn't get the ball up the floor. Timeout on the floor with 15-23 to play. 37-34, we'll be back. Well, we talked about Julius Hodge and uh, a different player first half and second half. In the last seven games, only six points per in the first 20 minutes. Almost more, more than double that in the second half, 13 points per. And they desperately need him to come alive here this evening. Julius Hodge has not scored in the second half. You see the breakdown right there. First half about on par. But Tim, in the first five minutes of the second half, North Carolina State only two points. 9-2, Georgia Tech winning this half. Pretty good run by the Yellow Jackets. And it's a three-point game. Inside to go to Nelson, who's been very active this half. Good, strong move, can't convert it. And they reset. And Bosch throws it away. Crawford pushes it, numbers aren't there. Carroll tries to force it inside, last touch by Bosch, so it'll be NC State basketball. Look at this, Florida State hanging all over Maryland. 47-44 Terrapin, who have led, start to there, but it's been close. It shouldn't be that shocking, Jimmy. They've got a quality win against a pretty good opponent down there in, in recent no memory. No question about it. <laughs> you know, they gave Duke all they could handle. It's that home court deal this year, Mike. No, no, playing playing very well. And you know that uh, you play against Leonard Hamilton, Hamilton's teams, and you're going to see 40 minutes of tenacious defense. Take a look at the turnover situation. 10 for the Wolfpack. Inside they go. Nolan kicks it out to Crawford. Crawford can't hit it. Hodge gets it back. Watkins left alone. Watkins. All right, if you're, you know, for Chris Bosch, you made a freshman mistake right there. You never want to save the ball under the other team's basket. He threw it right to Levi Watkins. Watkins with 11 points now. Elder is fouled. And the foul is on Crawford. You know, the, the best thing to do right here is either throw it long or just hold on to it and set your defense. You know, he saves it, and he's the only interior presence defensively Georgia Tech has, so that's that's a layup line right there. Levi Watkins having a terrific game. He's two for three beyond the arc. You can tell when a guy's getting confidence with an injury. Early in the year, Levi Watkins, primarily a three-point shooter, stayed out on the perimeter. Now he's attacking the basket. He's getting on the offensive glass, making very physical plays. Marvin Lewis goes out of the ball game. And Muhammad comes back in for Georgia Tech. They get the ball to Nelson, who backs it in. Nice inbounds play. And it's a three-point game. And that'll make uh, Herb Sendek's hairline go back even farther. You don't want to give up an easy layup off of an out-of-bounds play like that. And Herb can ill afford to lose any more. Josh Powell and Nelson really bumping and grinding at the post. Hodge over to Cheryl. Nice move by Scooter. A nice job by NC State, last couple possessions, putting their head down and hitting the lane. Back to Bosch, looked at the three, didn't take it and throws it away. Crawford takes it the distance. And gets a roll. When you make a flat lateral pass like that out of the wing and it gets picked off, it's virtually impossible for the defense to get back this crowd back into the game. Six straight for State. Jump hook there. Looking like a big guy on that play. Five point game with 12.41 to play. And 
There's the look. You can't lock your legs up like that coming out. Scooter Sherrill taking the big guy off the dribble. And there's Cliff Crawford. Crawford, we talked about it. One of the best in the ACC at stealing the basketball. And then uh, looking for, instead of Bosch on the low block, looking for B.J. Elder trying to get him back involved offensively. Elder was 0 for 2 in the first half. No points. 3 for 3 here in the second point, or the second half, rather. And those six points. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. Career ACC Rookie of the Week honors Penny Anderson by far. Ten of them in 1990. He ten was the national <laughs> player ten, of ten the year, of, Rookie of the Year. Ten out of 13. Do you think there was a? <laughs> think there was any issue with who it was going to be? Chris Bosh right there with four Rookies of the Week. I think unless somebody has a spectacular lights out February, that uh, it's going to be tough to overtake that man. Who'd they call that foul on? Josh Powell? It is Levi Watkins. And that's his second. So with 12.27 to play on a five point game, Georgia Tech has the ball. And you know, that, that last time out by, by Paul Hewitt, pretty good. He, the crowd was really starting to get whipped up, and uh, he sensed that, got everybody back in their seats a little bit. Muhammad hurt his knee. They banged knees. I think it was. Uh, one of those deals where your knees hit. Scooter and Muhammad hit knees, and Muhammad is called, or rather, Cheryl is called for his third. Scooter Cheryl goes out of the game, and Bennerman comes back in. Cameron Bennerman, a 6'4", 190-pound freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina. Inside of Nelson, he'll turn around. And the foul. The foul will be on Powell. And that's Powell's third. That's a pretty good call by the referee, too, because Powell really rode up underneath him on that jump shot. He had Nelson again doing him, doing what he wanted him to do, shoot that little jump shot. It is an unnecessary foul. Herb Sendek comes out onto the court. You know, even though even though he did have his arms straight up in the air, I think he's, if you watch it, with a, he moved underneath him with his lower body. I will tell you this, Ed Nelson, is really playing aggressively this half. Yeah, you see, you know, again, the, the arm up in the air, but really underneath him, good call by the official. Foul trouble for NC State. Cheryl has three, Powell has three, and Melvin has three. And Nelson makes the second when he has seven points, and it's a three-point game. They Crawford, he takes a timeout. And looks at his arm as he walks off. Well, it's a terrific job of Muhammad and Lewis double teaming in the backcourt. Tough to beat that off the dribble. Well, the Georgia Tech folks lost a great one this week. John Wack Heider, the second winning as basketball coach at Georgia Tech, died Sunday. He was 90 years old. His teams won 292 games. He coached at Georgia Tech from 1959 to 1971. He also graduated from Tech back in 1937 as one of the school's best all-around athletes. So our condolences go out to his family, the entire Georgia Tech family. Our thoughts and our prayers are with them. NC State 0 for 6 beyond the arc this half, Mike. Really haven't found the rhythm. Although I think they've had success then when they, when they really when they've tried to get inside and, and go to the rim. There it is. Marcus Melvin finally hits. And now Muhammad has called for a foul. Was it a technical? Hodge is still down. Hodge was a little slow to get up. Mohammed was complaining that uh, Hodge was holding on to his arm and 
I think there may be a little bit of an acting job going on here because they're uh, they're smiling about it. At least Julius Hodge is walking away. Paul Hewitt wants a clarification. There is no technical. The personal is called. We'll be back. NC State by six and let's take a look at this last play actually it's uh, Marcus Melvin his first good look at a three he was able to knock it down with some extracurricular activity going on underneath the basket uh, Ishmael Muhammad Julius Hodge getting locked up right there and uh, you know the Academy Awards were announced yesterday and I think we have to have a new category <laughs> for best performance by a wolf pack. How about that. Yeah, he went down grabbing his face and he was never hit above the shoulders. Well, I looked at him on the ground. I'm thinking technical call here. He got spanked. You look at that and it's almost a play on. NC State by six points, 11.25 to play. Tim Brett and Mike Jaminski with you at the RBC Center. Lewis picks up his dribble, now gets it over to Elder. Elder from way outside, not even close. And so NC State will take over. You know, even with that shot and everybody missed, it still allows Georgia Tech to get in a little bit of pressure because it was you know, baseline out of bounds. Georgia Tech just two for 11 beyond the arc. Kick, so they'll bring it in from the side. Watkins, Crawford, Hodge, Melvin, Powell on the floor right now for NC State. It's a team you talk about Tech, second in the conference as a team, 38% from behind the arc, so well off that pace. Well, this foul on Elder on Hodge. So El Hodge is now starting to get some calls. Yeah, and the crowd cheering that. This is what we talked about it. BJ Elder wants to be physical with Julius Hodge. Good call by the referees on that play. Jared Jack down the paint, and he's going to the line for one more. Good strong drive by Jack. Makes it a four-point game, and he's going to the line. Well, if you can look, Cliff Crawford is barking out instructions defensively here, and Jared Jack is just running right up his back on the play. Nobody ever stopped penetration of the basketball. Julius Hodge getting in a little bit too late. We talked about the strength of Jared Jack. Jack had 18 points, six assists in two games last week. ACC Rookie of the Week. He has struggled with his shot at times, but he converts a three-point play here and has seven points. It's a three-point game again. The whistle away from the ball. Ed Nelson. And Nelson picks up the personal. That's two on Nelson. Well, what's happening now, uh, we know North Carolina State can really get you spread out. Georgia Tech is trying to lay some body on cutters going through the lanes and getting caught. Ah, Joe for six. And it'll be Georgia Tech basketball. They say it was last touch by Josh Powell. Both coaches working hard tonight. I think both of them sense the enormity of the game. Georgia Tech five and four in the conference. NC State five and four in the conference. Oh, how about that move on the baseline by Bosch? Watkins let up just a little bit. I think he felt like he had Bosch pinned underneath the glass. Jack gets it back to Bosch. And he walked. Here's the look. He's got a little bit of a size advantage over Watkins. Just allowed a little time to create some space for himself. Turnover number 11, though, when he walked on the steal. Nine fifty to play in the game.
Shot clock at 10. Melvin with the turnaround. He's two for his last two. That's a pretty nice job. NC State sniffing out that mismatch. Uh, Melvin had Lewis on his back down in the low post. To Nelson. Strong move and banks it in. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a shuffle in there, but I think there are too many bodies for the ref to get a good look at it. One point game with 9 10 to play. Red Nelson, very uh, old school banger type player. He's throwing his body away and around inside. Nice pass inside. Watkins with the bank. Melvin found him and Watkins completed it. And now Tech throws it away. Well, again, another, you know, we've seen a couple air balls, air balls and some turnovers by Tech, but they've been along the baseline, and it's allowed them to set up their defense. Still a lot of time, Mike, but you have the feeling that every possession is critical in this game. The way things have gone, and the way the officials now really starting to tighten the screws on them. Muhammad comes back into the ball game. McHenry goes out. the team foul situation. Still waiting for the guy with the ball, Julius Hodge, to explode here in the second half. Marcus Melvin misses. Job by Powell to get it back. Crawford. And Bosch comes down with it. Good hustle by Bosch. Uh, very active. Really stayed with it. Then he turned it back over. This is Hodge. Jack picks up the personal. Hodge will go to the line. The long arms of Hodge, really, and it's a great job when guy picks up the dribble, really to get all over him defensively and try to make that pass difficult. Hodge just took it right away from Jared Jack. Three personals on Jack now as he gets into foul trouble. Hodge very quiet in this game. Got five points. This is the free throw. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, you know, State's doing a nice job again, being at home and defensively, they're getting some energy. But to have their leading scorer sitting there only five points and not having scored in the second half puts a lot of pressure on them. Hodge normally an 80% free throw shooter. This is them both. Nelson's calling for it down low. They can't get it to him. Jack again with a power move. Can't get it to go. Melvin with a rebound. Pretty good no call on that play, but Levi Watkins stepping in caused Jack to be more concerned about him than making the basket. Such a different tempo in the game than we saw in the first half. Hodge. Powell on the baseline. Banks it in. Well, nice job. You recognize that Chris Bosch, the big shot blocker out of the game. Powell just one power dribble and got to the rim. Powell now in double figures. Nelson will take it and hit it. That was for two. He talked about it. He had battled the last few possessions trying to get the ball down in the low block. He finally said, well, let's, I'll take my game outside. Pulls it back to a three-point game. Here's Powell again. Tech comes up with it. Lewis. 
And timeout, Georgia Tech. I think Paul Hewitt could feel that things were getting a little bit out of control for his ball club. Well, and he wanted to get Chris Bosch back in the ball game too. I mean, his uh, big center was sitting over there for a long period of time, and there wasn't any stoppage of play. 6:08 to play. NC State 52, Georgia Tech 49. Don't forget, ACC action continues Saturday, 1 o'clock, North Carolina and Clemson. This should be a pretty good ball game. And again, as we tell you, here in mid-February and uh, the tournament just around the corner, every one of these games really counts big as far as the seedings. Check your local listings or log on to the ACC.com. It's the Tar Heels and the Tigers. Now, earlier tonight, North Carolina got a win against Virginia. Felton and McCants, 21 each. And Carolina got out to a 10-0 start, and Virginia never caught up. Still close down in Tallahassee with the Maryland Terrapins, and we'll keep you posted on that game. An elder is stopped by Levi Watkins. That's three on Watkins. As we hit the six minute mark. Closed captioning for ACC basketball was provided by RBC Centura. Building a better bank one customer at a time. And we talked about it, B.J. Elder, he too much more comfortable at home. He's coming off that 23 point effort against Maryland. It only averages uh, 17 points a game on the road in the ACC. Great hustle by Jack to get it back for NC State. Jack with the penetration and can't get it to go. The follow is no good. All right, Chris Bosch, and uh, normally he's going to finish that play right there, but probably not loose, having not been in the ball game for a while. NC State uses a lot of the clock. Under 10 minutes on the shot, or under 10 seconds rather on the shot clock as Powell kicks it back out to Crawford. Five out of control in the lane, and Georgia Tech gets it back. Good defensive stand that time by Jared Jack, keeping Crawford under control. Nelson again splits the two and banks it in. Oh my. He had, he had three points in the first half. He now has 10 here in the second. That doesn't elevate a lot, but really has had some nifty moves down in the low post. Also has shown the ability to pull off the block and shoot the jump shot. Where the Tech's bench up applauding that effort. He's really made the difference here in the second half. Watkins with the turnaround. The bucket counts will go to the line. How about the game for Levi Watkins? Well, some of the uh, leading men taking a back seat in this game. Levi Watkins has been solid all game long off the bench for Herb Sindek. So the foul on Lewis and that's his third. Watkins goes to the line a 61 percent free throw shooter. Sophomore from Rockville Maryland. Converts the three point play. Makes it a four point game with 434 to play. Mike, take a look at our Chrysler game summary because it looks like this, and those three guys will tell a pretty good story. Yeah, and Julius Hodge 0 for 6 uh, second half. Ed Nelson getting it done. 10 points in the second half, 10 of his 13. Levi Watkins, a new career high. He likes. Watkins plays well against Georgia Tech. He came off the bench to score 15 in the first game against Tech. Here he's got 16. The yellow jacket stopping. We'll find out. Let's we'll see how they convert on their offensive. Here's Lewis and a whistle away from the ball. They call Marcus Melvin on the foul. The 421 remaining in the game, and Bosch goes to the line. That's four on Melvin. And if you're Georgia Tech, you like where you are right now. Four-point game. Crowd really not into it. 
been much more aggressive in the second half with your defense because your offense has been good. You've been able to set up full court. It really has gotten NC State out of out of rhythm offensively. Tim, Georgia Tech had 25 points in the first half. They've already got 27 in this half. There's still 420 left to go, so their offense has picked up dramatically. Bosch with pretty good numbers. He's got 13 points now, and he's only missed once at the line. He's coming off that double-double he had against Maryland. Two-point game as we approach the four-minute mark. State has been content during this stretch to really run a lot of clock. Powell, this is for two. Can't get it to go down, and Bosch with the rebound. Georgia Tech with a chance to tie or take the lead, and the Yellow Jackets have not led since early in the first half. Crawford with the steal. Three on one. Hodge is fouled. So the foul is called on Anthony McHenry. That's three on him. And Hodge goes back to the line. That's one of the few really open court opportunities that NC State has had in this half. Julius Hodge has to do a better job. You talked about it, 80% shooter, only five of eight from the line. He missed his last two attempts. As a team, State nine for 12. Hodge bangs that one in. We, we were talking uh, before, Tim, at the halfway point, I think this man at the line is definitely an all-league performer, the way he's played up to, Mike, up to this so point in the season. He does so many things. He handles the ball, he passes, he scores, and he's always there when they need him. 3.39 to play in the game. 57-53 now, Pack. NC State clinging to a four-point lead, but Georgia Tech playing better offensively in the second half. B.J. Elder getting untracked after being shut out in the first half. Jared Jack still aggressive. Chris Bosch has been terrific all game long. 13 points, nine rebounds for him. And Ed Nelson, double-figure scoring in the second half alone, 10 of his 13 after intermission. And certainly, it was Nelson who changed the attitude of the Yellow Jackets with that aggressive play. Here's Jack. Inside they go to Bosch, puts it on the ground, takes it up and scores. Nice touch. You got to have some support from the back from the backside. Watkins trying to front Bosch that time and really didn't have any help from the back. Two point game. Crawford to bring it back out. Crowd here at the RBC Center now getting quiet, a little bit nervous as we come down the stretch under three minutes to play. And Watkins misses. Hodge comes down with it. And he did that with pure strength. Uh, and that, you know, it's, that's, that's a, a, an example of a guy not letting his offense affect the rest of his game. Quickness to the basketball, picking up a vital recycle for his team on the offensive rebound. 15 on the shot clock. Powell to Crawford. Back to Watkins with six on the shot clock. Five. Crawford penetrates and can't get it to go, but there is Powell again with the putback. State had the opportunities, Mike. Right, they just, you know, State can't feel a, a lot of confidence offensively. Last couple of games, Tim, they've averaged 58 points per, and they're sitting right at 57 with two minutes to go. Lewis beyond the arc. And great hustle by Nelson again to keep it alive. Here's Nelson, and he walks. I think they're going to say Jared Jack traveled on that play before he was able to get the pass to Nelson. That's turnover number 16. So look, the long three missed by Lewis. Bodies all over the floor. And there's your walk. Yeah, there's the extra step before he got the pass off. So both teams now 
missing opportunities. Tim Brant and Mike Jaminski with you at the RBC Center in the Triangle at Raleigh. 145 to play. It's NC State 57, Georgia Tech 55. The game has been close throughout. The largest lead was 12 by NC State in the first half, but Georgia Tech has closed the gap and kept it close here in the second. Wolfpack by two with the ball. Shot clock once again goes down to 10. Back to high. Five on the shot clock. And high scores. That's some great players. If they're not playing well during the game, they come to play in the last two minutes. Left hand finish by Julius Hodge. One for seven for the field from Hodge, but that was big. Here's Fox. Jump ball is called, and the possession arrow belongs to Georgia Tech. Julius Hodge making the play defensively. Watch right, this drive. Nelson coming in, finished with the left hand. Spectacular play. And then digging in down defensively on Bosch. Josh Powell comes into the ball game. And Marcus Melvin goes out. The state has not been good on these baseline out of bounds. And if you're tech, you don't need a three right now. Here's Lewis. Tough shot. Never really got a chance to square up, and now they call the foul. on Bosch and Watkins who's been spectacular off the bench tonight will go to the line. Levi Watkins 61 percent from the line on the year. This is that one and this is knocked out of bound by NC State and it'll be Georgia Tech basketball and so Still pretty much the same situation, Timmy. You don't need a three-point bomb right now, and Georgia Tech only two of 13 from the game. But your guys from the perimeter are Elder and, and Lewis. 45 seconds left. Elder scores for Georgia Tech, and immediately the Ye Yellow Jackets take a timeout with 41.3 left. Final 41.3 seconds. It's a two-point game, but NC State has the ball here. They can use most of that clock, Mike. Well, and the thing is, though, all Tech needs right now is a stop. There's going to there's a six-second differential between game and shot clock. They make a good defensive stand here. There's going to be plenty of time to get a shot at the end. Georgia Tech's going to come with the pressure. Crawford will bring it in. And they'll try to get it to Hodge. This is Melvin. Melvin, oh, took it high, dangerously high, and the foul is called on Jack. Wow, there were at least two instances in that dribble where it easily could have been called carrying. Yeah, I thought so too. He brought it up high and turned it over. Take a look. Right. right there, got hung up on his hip a little bit, and then right there. <laughs> and awfully high dribble. And how about that? That's a big man going against the other team's point guard in the open floor. And Marcus Melvin has really struggled. Makes it when it counts. He looks relieved. He has 10 points. And it's a three point game. This could make it a two possession game. Come on, man. 6'8", 235-pound junior, picking both. So it's back to a two-possession game. Sense of urgency now for Georgia Tech. And now you, can, you take the bomb if you got it. Lewis can't get it to go. And State has it and will go to the line. Well, the nice aggressive drive inside. Lewis right there really had no choice. It was almost a turnover. 
You know, Tim, one point to make. NC State, number nine in the conference in rebounding, but they have matched Georgia Tech on the glass, and that's been a huge factor. They'll look at that bucket as it hung up on the, the rim and wouldn't go as Watkins goes back to the line to try to put this game away. And talk about home and road. It's much easier to win ugly at home than it is on the road. And this has not been a pretty game, but I think NC State's going to have enough left over to get the W. Spectacular game by Levi Watkins. And he may have just put this one away. NC State's going to switch everything on the perimeter. Elder had to force a three-pointer. Hodge is fouled by Nelson. And this one is over. They're on their feet at the RBC Center. Our Pepsi players of the game. Ed Nelson, 13 points, four rebounds. Really turned the tempo here in the second half. And Levi Watkins, who came off the bench tonight for State with 18 points, five rebounds. As we watch Hodge now go to the line. And you see Ed Nelson, and you touched on it. Uh, <laughs> Levi Watkins had the calendar circled when he was playing Georgia Tech. Two different career highs this year against them. Absolutely. But as we look at this now, the Wolfpack will go to six and four in the conference. Georgia Tech will fall to five and five in a tie with Virginia, who also lost tonight. And I, I think a, a big regaining of confidence for NC State, who had lost two tough road games. Lewis has an open look. But it's too little, too late. NC State 63, Georgia Tech 57. And so the Yellow Jackets continue to be winless on the road. NC State goes to 13 and 7, 6 and 4 in the conference. Georgia Tech falls to 12 and 9. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network.